There we go. Hello, hello. Just getting everything set up on my uh, iPad so I can see your comments. Welcome, welcome. I'm excited. I'm a little nervous because, again, I took a class specifically with the girls at Salty So when I did this. Um, so I'm a little nervous about this. So we'll, we'll just make the best out of it. Let me get to the live here. All right. Hi, Kristen. A little to me too, Kristen, right? <laughs> um, so we'll get to, we'll get started in a couple seconds here. I just trying to organize all of my goods. Um, first thing that I want to know is first, like, just tell me when you, when you pop in, whether you're here live or you're, you're watching this on a replay, um, you know, just tell me, you know, maybe where you're, where you're at, like just state, you don't need to give, don't give me specifics. Let's be safe on the internet. Um, but just tell me, you know, where you're at. And if you, if you cut out from the pattern or if you bought a kit from Salty Sews, I'd like to know like from like who's doing some of their own fabrics versus those of us who bought a kit and maybe have had it stashed. Um, and Kristen, I think you're totally fine about not interfacing if you did water resistant, um, if you did waterproof canvas. I think you're totally fine with that. Um, awesome. So we have some pattern gals. Uh, Cause I know that when I first started sharing that I had bought one of these kits and that I had made one at So Magical, I had a bunch of people who were like, oh, I've had that kit for a while. Like, I feel like it's one of those, which I understand um, after taking the class with Salty Sews and also doing, it is when they say very confident beginner um, to intermediate, like they mean that um, because it's just a lot, right? Um, hey, Kat. Um, so if you're new here to my channel or we met uh, in the past, you know me, hopefully. Um, but if you're new here, my name is Genevieve uh, and I am the curator uh, of Thunderbird Handcrafted with Genevieve. This is my YouTube channel where I do share tutorials. Lately, it's been a lot of sew alongs. Um, and I, when I'm nervous, I do talk with my hands, y'all. So I'm, I'm sorry. I know that bothers some people, but it, I'll try to just stick them in my pocket here uh, for the beginning. I decided to do this, um, everything but the machine tote, because I purchased it for my daughter for Christmas. Uh, my daughter is a crocheter, so I thought it would be a really cool gift for her because she's in college and she'll be able to use it to store all of her crochet stuff. So I'll show you mine that I made um, at So Magical this year uh, down in Florida. Um, so I'm a Harry Potter fan. Uh, so this is the kit that I chose to make myself. And I actually did this on my domestic machine that I had really not made a lot of bags on yet. So I was actually very proud and I, I guess I should be a little bit more confident than what I am right now <laughs> um, because I'm more um, used to sewing bags on my Sailrite Fabricator than on my domestic Bernina. Um, but I do feel, because I did this uh, on my, yeah, go grab your labels, guys, if you if you want to grab a label. Um, we have a little bit of time. Don't, don't stress, Kristen. Uh, and so uh, this was the one I made, and I just thought, it's such a great little pattern because it'll slip down over your wheeling case. Uh, it has a bunch of zipper areas, a bunch of outside storage. And then the inside, like who doesn't love like a little fun storage area? And my, my zipper here was a little tight because again, it was the first thing I ever like really constructed on my domestic. Um, but it has like this little mesh pocket down here for a scissors. Um, but we're going to, we're gonna try our best this evening. Uh, and uh, we're gonna go through the pattern just as the way it's it's built. Um, I am not sharing any measurements, so hopefully you have yours cut out. Um, but this is just a fun thing, fun little kit. Now, here's the, here's the tricky part. When I scheduled this live, I thought my daughter would already be home and I could say to her, hey kiddo, don't come upstairs. Um, I'm working on something for Christmas. I'll don't come upstairs if you need me. Holler up the steps, and I'll you know so and so forth. Um, she did not come home. My daughter is in college in the Adirondacks of New York. They had a storm um, that came Mon well 
Sunday into Monday yesterday, so she did not drive home over the weekend. And so she's actually soon to be home now. So when she arrives, I, I, put, I don't have my phone on Do Not Disturb right now because she's still driving. So should I need to answer a phone call? Just know that it's part of being a mom for me um, as I want to make sure she makes it home safe. Um, but once she arrives, you're going to hear our dog who misses her dearly. Um, and it's basically his second mom is coming home. Um, so you're going to hear a lot of ruckus when she comes home. I did tell my, my son that just to let his sister know that we we're on a live. Um, maybe I'll show you how crazy our dog is about her coming home. So, um, just so you know, probably in the next 30 minutes to an hour, we might hear a big ruckus um, downstairs. So I am using my uh, Sailrite fabricator. Luckily, Facebook saved my orientation, so we are this direction. As with any YouTube video, please give it a like, please comment, um, feel free to share it out. If you uh, have other sewing friends, you think that this would be fun um, for them to see. Uh, we do have Dinah in the background, um, the no drama llama, so hopefully we don't have any drama other than the drama from us figuring this out. <laughs> Hopefully no um, bobbin uh, roulette and hopefully no um, issues with the machine. I did oil everything. This one thing to remember, oil your machines, they, they need it. If you haven't sat down um, to sew in the past couple days, make sure you have your machine oiled and uh, everything cleaned up so that we can hopefully have a non-dramatic uh, event with our sewing machines this evening. So let's first get to the beginning of the pattern um at the beginning of the pattern it does talk a little bit about our zippers so in the kit and again i don't know what you guys have if you are just um if you're not using the kit all right so uh we do have in the kit we do have two zippers that we have to mark a certain distance from the zippers. See, those of you who cheated on the zipper, I feel like if I would have cut a zipper to the size, I would not feel as confused right now. But the kit does come with the number three zippers, which I understand why after making one, like to have um, a thinner zipper probably is nicer. So we do have two of those. And the pattern does tell us to mark... Um, to mark the openings. And then it says, once marked, open the zipper some, and while holding the pieces together, sew back and forth across the teeth, um, just above the mark, just above mark one, the end where the pull is when it's closed. This will hold the two pieces together uh, when you are working on aligning the tabs. And then on earth are two by eight inch, um, zipper tab strips and cut each one down to um, four two by two pieces which make complete sense all right so that's one of these I believe so I have my I actually cut some of these out of my own fabric I used um, so mine is partly kit partly um, there it is, two by eight. So this is the one that we're going to use. I used some of my dyed fabric because I thought my daughter would probably really like if um, some of her everything but, but the machine um, had some of my fabric. Um, <clears throat> your friend put your poles on for you. That's awesome. <laughs> Which zipper are you on, inside or outside? So that's basically, this is where I'm, I'm looking right now. It says... We need our zippers, um, so your trolley sleeve zip zipper, you need to make two marks, making your zipper 8.25 apart from each other, so eight and a quarter apart from one another. That's your trolley sleeve. You need to make a marking. Two marks, 8.25. Um, so from this distance to this distance, it would be 8.25 or... Um, 6.75. So one of them is 8.25, one of them is 6.75. 
Um, so you need to make those markings, which I did before we got on um, here. So take your time to re read that on your pattern. Make sure you understand it um, and make your markings. And then we're going to go and we're going to you unzip it a little bit. And we're then going to make, we're going to stitch this to keep it like closed, but not closed, if you get what I'm saying. And then we have our other marking down here, which is where we're probably going to line up our zipper tabs, I believe. This was also the area in my class that um, they did this for us to try to get through the class quicker, which was, so this is the part, this is the only part I did not do. Um, so let me go grab my scissors and I'm going to fold this this way and then fold it again. And then that will make my four, four zipper tabs. So let me grab my scissors over here because I took my other little small scissors from my sewing machine and it's over by Big Bertha where I was ironing this weekend. So I was ironing some dyed fabric for the new year releases. All right, so we're gonna first fold it in half and we'll have two and then we're gonna fold it again. And this is the piece that is um, your two by eight piece. Your two by eight strip is what we're we're doing. So folded it th that in half and now I have two pieces here and I need to do that again. Okay. So these, this is not your, these are not your zippers that go out around the edge. Um, that's a different zipper. Um, these are your zippers that go on your trolley sleeve and on your interior mesh um, pocket. All right. Let me just read. This was a very different way of how I had ever done zipper tabs, I think. I am a confident beginner. <laughs> I'm so sorry, please go back. I just found, <laughs> girl, I didn't go anywhere. Do you remember only because I want to use a fancy zipper outside? Yeah, we're not we're not doing the outside. We are doing we are doing we're we're at the very basics, you guys. Um, we're doing the mesh pot. We're just getting this ready. The trolley zipper sleeve, the trolley sleeve zipper, and the interior mesh zipper. Clipper pin, sewing one quarter seam allowance. Make sure that your zipper pull is on the right side of the tab. Oh, let me just play with this a second. I see. Okay. I've always done a zipper tab where I kind of fold it over. This we do. This we are not doing that. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense now. Okay. So I'm just gonna set my other pieces aside right now. And we're only going to have those two zippers and our zipper tab pieces, okay? I'm going to 
throw all my other stuff over on my cutting table. All right, I'm gonna turn my camera for you guys. And again, like I said, if you hear a rumpus factory happening, it's because my daughter is home. How can, ev can everybody see okay? <laughs> Do you have a discount code? I don't have a discount code for the pattern, I'm sorry. And this is the one thing I, I really feel like I, I get that um, pattern makers do discount codes, but man, they, they put so much work in for what they want for patterns. It's, it's not much. So um, I encourage you guys to pay for them. I wish I did have a coupon code, but I don't. Um, all right. So now all I'm doing is you'll see here, I have the zipper opened because um, these are the zippers that were provided in my kit but then I did mark a mark that I'm just gonna sew across um, that to hold this together in place, okay? Uh, since these are already pre-made zippers. If, you if you're using zipper by the yard, I don't know if you have to do that um, because you're just gonna be putting, you're gonna be cutting, you'll be cutting your zipper to meet the marks that I have markings on, okay? so. You probably don't need to do this part if you have zipper by the yard. Mm -hmm. And I decided, I, I think if some of you are coming over um, from my Facebook group or from the Instagram, I am using the golden wheat. That's the thread I decided to use from Saya. So I'm just gonna go straight across here and then back and then straight across again just to hold that in place. Where I have my little mark. Okay, and I'm gonna do that for the other one as well. So if you're using zipper by the yard, then you just want to go by on the pattern. It's going to say, say to you where it says to make your marks on your zipper. You're just going to cut your zippers those sizes, okay? All right. So I've made my markings. So I have my trolley sleeve pocket zipper. And I have my marking here, my marking here, and then I have my interior mesh zipper. So my one mark is where I've stitched and then my other mark is here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to place my zipper tab pieces facing one another, just like so. I'm gonna sandwich these together like so. Right? Is that correct? Yeah. I don't know, you guys. Man, that doesn't seem right now that I, because I only have, <sighs> Lordy. Let me just read again. Align raw ends to mark one trolley sleeve pocket zipper. Yep, sandwiching the zipper tape between, in between them and center. Mm hmm that's what I'm thinking I'm supposed to do here. But you see, that's where, oh, maybe. One side goes like that. Cause I only have four. Is this the type of, I feel like my, the, I'm going by the pictures you guys and am I doing it right? Flip the two tabs open away from the zipper. 
Do I need to cut it even more? Did I not cut them enough? Two by two. These are two by two. Yep. Do we have two zipper? Let me read. Zipper tab. Oh, we do. You guys, we're good. I am correct. We have another one over there. All right. So we're gonna sandwich these together like so. And we're gonna right where that line that we made. I'm pretty sure I'm right here. We're gonna go with it. So if anything, if we need to make more zipper tabs for ourselves, that's not that big of a deal. So we're gonna do a quarter inch seam allowance. Okay. I'm gonna back stitch at the beginning and the end. Oh, my tension isn't good, you guys. I had done some TPU the last time I used my machine, so my tension probably isn't quite right. All right, let's top stitch this. My tension is horrible. What's going on here? All right, and then my other side, gonna find my mark on here. Sandwich it. Okay, and then what they did is they just went in here and cut out that zipper part. Okay, because now it's not a big deal. You don't need that bulk. I'm not going to cut off the end part of the zipper, but I'm going to cut those tails off. But the main area for that is still there. So there's, this is my trolley zipper. And now I need to go find my other zipper piece, which is in here somewhere. Okay, for this one. I 
feel like what I've always done for zipper tabs, and maybe this is the way that they said to do them, but like I said, I wasn't the one who did them the last time. Um, I've always done it where, you know, like I would sew it across and then I would like fold it like so. Do you know what I mean? I've never done it this way, but we're going to roll with it. We're gonna do, use what we got. Mm. Or do with what we got. You just wanna make sure everything is straight. And if mm. you're looking at the pattern and you see something different, no. You will need tabs for, you will need the interfaced zipper tabs for your outside zipper. We're just not doing that yet. All right, Kristen? We are not that part. And the girls at Salty Sews are probably like, this woman does not know what she's doing. Or maybe some of you are thinking that. But like I said, this wasn't the part that I did um, I didn't do this part during the during the actual class. And if you, we need to cut another two by eight, eight inch piece for your main zipper, then that's not a big deal. It's just a two by eight inch piece. We're just doing the zipper for the trolley cart area and the zipper for the um, interior mesh pocket. There's three zippers. So you have your main zipper, which is not what we're doing right now. You have your um, trolley zipper and you have your mesh pocket zipper. So your main zipper is gonna be pretty long. I didn't, don't know how long that is, but it's gonna be pretty long. And then um, your other two zippers are gonna be smaller. So three zippers total. There's a stink bug. They're horrible this time of year. All right, so there's my mesh pocket zipper. Here's my trolley zipper. How are we doing? I know that, that I'll, I'll be very honest, that part was a little confusing for me because I never did it. And I don't even know if I did it correctly, you guys, but reading Make sure your pull is on the right. Yep. Yeah. Yes, we need tabs on both of your small zippers as well as I think our large zippers. So you're going to need one, two. I personally think however you want to do tabs is how you do your tabs, <laughs> quite honestly. But you need tabs on all three of your zippers. 
and you want to make sure the length of your zippers from tab to tab is the length that they're telling you in the pattern, if that makes sense. All right, Kristen, we okay? I know that I feel like, again, I felt a little confused here too. I don't even know if I did these tabs right, but knowing the rest of the pattern, just so that you have the length of what you need for these small zippers and tabs on them, we're good. If you need to go cut more tabs for your front zipper when we get to that part, we'll do that then, but... And I probably, you know what, I probably didn't need to cut an extra one, but I had, because I have my other tabs for my, I have another eight inch, two by eight inch piece. So you should have two, two by eight inch pieces, one interfaced and one not interfaced. And I don't, did this one say? <clears throat> I don't think it matters which one you use. I'm not reading. It just says one will be interface, one will not. So really it's whatever ones you wanna use for these, okay? So I'm just gonna set these aside. I don't, I don't need these right now. I'm just gonna set these aside. We just got them ready for when we need them. All right, okay. Now we're going to get our top and our two side panels and both, stri both strap loop pieces. And our zipper tape. So we're just gonna do our two side panels and our top first. We're not gonna worry about our strap loop pieces yet or the zipper. We're just gonna get our top panel and our two side panels. All right, so I have my two side panels and my top panel. And however your top panel, however, certain way, just make sure like one of the things that they had shown us was like, if you wanna write on, on it, like this is, I'm probably gonna have the moth like facing where the drawer is open. I was, I, I should put, you know, like on here top. And then the same here, like I'm gonna write top, top, okay? That way I know that those are the um, top pieces. And then I'm going to clip my centers all the way around, so on um, all sides. So just so that I have those markings for later on. What was really nice about the kit was everything was already interfaced. I didn't realize that, um, but they had interfaced everything already, which is super nice. We doing okay. I know that was a little stressful. That was a stressful beginning, you guys. Oh, I did kind of look at it a little bit beforehand and I was like, oh, that's not a big deal. It's just zipper tabs. But I think I'm going to ask them the next time I see them. I think they have a new unique way of doing the zipper tabs. Um, and I just have never done it that way. So next time I see them, because I love their classes. If you get the chance to go to So Magical um, I or any... I guess any event that they're at, because I think they do, um, like I've done the um, suicide events as well. Um, take a salty sews class because I that's I had all my classes with them, um, and they are very good at teaching and they're very patient. Okay, all right, so I have all my centers clipped. 
Now I would just want to make sure that when I go and piece these together, I'm I'm positioning them the way I want. So since this is the top and I want this to be facing me as the top, I'm going to sandwich right sides together, meeting the centers, all right, with my right piece. Because when I flip this down over, then this is going to be in the right direction, if that makes sense, you guys. So I'm going to clip this in place. And I think this really only matters if your fabric is directional. If you didn't pick directional fabric, you probably don't need to worry about this. Um, but if your fabric is directional, you do want to make sure that when you flip it, it's going in the right direction. Now let's look and see what our seam allowance is here. So... And we're going to do a 3 8 inch seam allowance. So, and our seam allowances really matter here. Okay. So, 3 8 seam allowance. I'm going to use my guide to help me. And, you know, Salty says also, just so that I, I'm making sure I'm doing it right. They also do have this great little guide. Um, so I can make sure, make sure that I'm correct here on what my 3 8 is because I always feel like maybe, maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, all right, that looks, this you can get on their website too. It's great for serger as well um, because it allows you to, you know, like to line it up um, along your cert, along your serger line also. So. All right, so we have our three-eighths. And stitch length is right. I'm gonna just back stitch the beginning and the end here. Let me see how my Something isn't, something isn't, isn't cohesive here with my, it was just the beginning with my tension. We can always stitch over it if we need to. Let me grab, before I do this, I should teach good habits. Let me just see here for a second. Take this piece of vinyl. So one thing going from TPU to other fabrics, mm -hmm. I just feel like I haven't mastered that. doing what I wanted to do you guys let's see I'm getting loose underneath tension Oh, there we 
there we're getting a little bit better I think one more one more pass and we'll have it So a different thread than what I'm used to. There we go. That looks much nicer. Not perfect, but nicer. I lied. Maybe two more passes. Sorry about that, but I want it to look, I am making this for a gift for my kids, so mm. I do want it to look a certain way. And I have everything threaded. It's always important to make sure that you thread everything right. Sometimes you never know. Okay, now back to regularly scheduled programming. looking yeah now we're looking good now we're cooking with gas you guys okay so we have our one side on now once stitched we're gonna finger press seam allowance down towards the side panel. Okay, so you want your seam to be going towards the side panel, okay, before we top stitch, because that's gonna help when you put your um, container in. That's gonna help you um, with, you know, fitting everything in there, so. Now we're gonna go and top stitch an eighth of an inch onto that. I'm just throwing everything tonight, you guys. There we go. looks really nice I'm actually really it, it was debatable I was thinking about either doing Saya's peacock um but I'm actually really glad I did the golden wheat because I feel like it it pops for sure all right so there's the top stitch and again this is my left side piece I'm facing I want when the drawers open I want my moth to be there so now I'm gonna line up the other side and we're going to do our 3 8 seam allowance. was the one thing I really had to get used to when I got an industrial machine is I feel like you definitely play with your stitching and your stitch length way more than on a, a domestic machine right um till you find like and not every like model of the same machine plays the same way when it comes to you know 
<laughs> you know, how, how the tension needs to be for certain fabrics. Like my fabricator could be totally different than yours. I also just noticed this bag right here. So these are Apollo bones <laughs> that I keep behind my sewing machine because when he gets pesty, he, he requires me to give him food. He's very food driven. Um, so when he gets pesty, then I'm like, here, have a bone. I'm trying to finish something. All right, so now we're going to top stitch that side. And again, keeping our seam allowance is, is underneath the side piece, not underneath the center piece. So there is our top, our top and our side. Now, let me grab the pattern. Because now we're going to work on our strap loops on either side of where our straps are going to go. So I'm going to go grab those. And what did I decide here? decided I was going to use some of my dyed fabric. All right, so here are my strap loops. And we are going Okay. So we're going to set this the our our main big piece. We're going to set that aside for just a second. And we're just going to have our strap loops, okay? And we're going to fold them in half to finger crease them, okay? You could press them if you wanted to. And then we're gonna meet that line we just pressed in the center and fold just like a piece of bias tape, just like so, okay? So we're gonna fold it in half and we're gonna meet that line we just made. I'm just reading you guys. And then you're just gonna fold that in about an eighth of an inch or a quarter inch probably, more of a quarter inch. You could use double-sided tape here if you wanted to. So you see how I fold it in the either side so once, once we're done top stitching this, it'll be in its own little so you can use some clips to just hold it where you want it on the one side. I'm just gonna hold it on the one side. And now what you're gonna what we're gonna do is we're just gonna do an eighth of an inch top stitch all the way around the outside edge of this. So I'm not going to I'm not going to back stitch. I'm going to pull through the stitch in the corner. Oh, that's too far ahead. I want to go about there. There we go. So 
Make sure all your little ends are in. knot this off and clip it. So this is what it'll look like when you're done with it. So we're going to do two like this. I guess I'm not a confident beginner. Just finish one zipper, girl. All right, I'm gonna make calm down, just keep going, okay. Um, I'm just gonna finish these and then we'll we'll take a moment, okay? Because again, I'm trying to get this done, but I don't need to breeze through it, you guys. There's no rush, all right. So be like if you're if you're working this with me, please be like Kristen and and say so, all right. Don't be afraid to say so because. You know what? We're all in this together. We're all figuring it out. Okay. So I have one of those done. And now I'm going to do the other one. So again, we're going to fold it like a hot dog. We're going to meet the insides. But then the sides are like a quarter inch in. And when my daughter gets here, we'll take a little, we'll take a, I'll take a little breather, okay? And we'll go down and watch my dog lose his mind over his second mom coming home, okay? Nothing is joyful, as joyful as a dog seeing their person, right? After a long time. <laughs> We got our dog, uh, Apollo, right. It w he was born in January 2020. So we got him in February of 2020. And then everything shut down, you know, in March. And so the kids were home. My daughter was in high school at the time. She was a junior in high school. And so a lot of his well-behaved skills are only because of her. Okay. Um, because she... She got into like the whole training of him and um, she used the clicker and all of that stuff because um, she was home. She had the time to like dedicate to it, but he was so used to being home with us and uh, I work from home, obviously, right? Well, then the kids were like, they were in school the next year, like school started and they did go back to school, but it was like off and on. Like there was two different teams, right? Um, and Kristen says, made those, but my sides don't match the top. I was trying to match a design. Need to recut. Still here. Kristen, girl, I'm here with you, okay? And if you're at a part that I'm not, if I can help you, I'll help you, okay? So please, I'm just glad you're here, okay? I'm just glad you're here. Um, and so when they went back to school <laughs> and we live out in the country, so they take a bus to school. He had not, he didn't understand why they were leaving. And he sat out in the yard for two hours facing the direction, um, that the bus went. Just like, when are they coming home? <laughs> why aren't they here? <laughs> um, and my daughter, it was his, his second, per, his second mom, because obviously I was the person who was up in the middle of the night with the puppy when he was the puppy. So I'd probably say I'm his first mama, but my daughter is 
is definitely his second favorite person in the world. With my son coming close behind. Now you could rivet these on, and I might actually rivet these for my daughters. Um, I'm not good at the whole boxed stitching thing. I'll be really honest, but I'm not good at the, the X box thing. But there's always, it's always important to practice, correct? All right, so I'm just gonna mark where these go on the exterior. What does she say here? Okay. Hmm. Oh my. Grab the oh, I'm 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 far down. Okay. Whoa. I skipped a step. All right, so we're gonna fold this in half. Make sure we're folding it correctly. And then we're going to mark two inches down. Just gonna make a slight mark so I can see it. From the seam, you're marking two inches down. center mark there. And that's where they go. I don't know why this tension keeps playing with me a bit. But I see that some of these stitches are very loopy. Alright, I think I'm going to use some double-sided tape here just to kind of keep these in place. The underneath looks good. And my stitching on the interface stuff looks pretty good, but my canvas, it doesn't. Never in any of my mentions of <laughs> of doing YouTube videos did I say I was as perfect at any of this. <laughs> you get to see all my flaws. All right, so there's that one. Now where did I, okay, there's the other one. Let's put double-sided tape. I think I'm just gonna sew a box and not the X box, and then I'm gonna rivet, um, put a rivet in the center of each of these. Well, in the center, in the center of the boxes, not the center of the loop thing. Okay, now I'm gonna stitch my box.
Let me re redo my bobbin. It's because you never know sometimes something isn't right for other reasons. Everything looks good as far as my top thread. Everything's in the right place. Okay. I'd like to try to match my stitching. I'll do this to help you out, Kristen. This takes this takes a lot of time to do each one of these and tie them off. So I'm giving Kristen time to to do what she needs to do. <laughs> I hope that if if some of you are here who are live, because um, I I know when I shared I had a kit, a bunch of people were like. Yeah, I've had the kit for a while. I just haven't made it. I hope some people watch this and decide I'm going to make that kit because they see that it doesn't need to be perfect. <laughs> so, and I guess I should start this box this direction. So, I make them the same distance. All right, so there's what the uh, handle slip area looks like. I'm gonna put a rivet, I think I'm gonna do a rivet on either side of those, just to give it a little bit more. This is gonna be something that's going to my kid um, who's in college and she has to move around a lot, so I want it to stay in place for her. I think she's coming. Do you guys want to see this craziness? Three eight seams on the sides. Yes. Oh, sorry. I didn't realize I was. All right, here. I don't know. Can I flip it? Here he comes. Watch. There he goes. He knows it's her. He knows it's her. She's gonna be like, Mom, don't put me on YouTube. Um, I, 
Yeah, we can still get in there to rivet later, Kristen. Who's out there? Who's out there? Here, watch out, Dennis. I want to get your sister's. <gasps> Who is that? Oh my goodness. <laughs> You're live on YouTube, just so you know. Yeah. I'm doing a. He's so happy to see you. Hi. <laughs> Who is that? Hi, buddy. Do you miss me? You smell the cat. <laughs> you smell Casper. Oh. All right. So I just came down so everybody could see your crazy dog uh, who loves you and missed you so much. You, me. Um, me. you can park there next to your brother's car. Yeah, I was going to unpack Oh, okay. This is my daughter, Isabella. She's in college for biology. So, and I'm making your Christmas gift, so don't come upstairs until I'm done. All right. All right. Glad you're home. Glad you're safe. All right. I'm going upstairs. All right. Love you, Mom. Love you, too. All right. So, that's my kid. Well, both my kiddos. You didn't see my son, I guess. I guess you just heard him. Um, but... Are you coming upstairs now? She's she's staying. All right. Yes, we can totally rivet later. All right, we're gonna move. And there we are, we can see again. All right, so yeah, I th you can still get in. So like, even if I, I could probably still get in here to rivet this one as well if I wanted to. Because once you open it, you're not putting a lining or anything there. Okay. All right. It's so good to have her home. I'll ask me again in, in a couple days <laughs> when the two of them are arguing over something. Sibling. Sibling love. They actually are pretty good siblings. We got we got pretty lucky. It's a whole other world. My husband and I are both only children, so um it's a whole other world of what it's like to have a sibling and to watch it through them. So. down a little closer for you guys. See, yeah, so fall over everywhere here. I'm going up and down the steps. <laughs> okay, so we have those on. Now let me read our pattern, what we're doing next, because I think the next part is our zipper. Okay. 
page six. Here we go. All right, so I wanted to lay the right direction the way I would if when the drawers open. Oh, this is the part that makes everybody very nervous. trying to see okay so we need our long piece of zipper tape all right so this is our front zipper tape we do not need the poles so if you put your poles on this if that's what you had your friend put your poles on, you don't need your poles on this yet. We're gonna fold it in half and we're gonna find our center marks. All right, and I do clip zipper tape just slightly. I know for some people it's a mortal sin, um, but it's okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to right sides together. We're gonna clip and we're gonna meet our center marks. And I actually, do I want to make where our marks are here? No, just my center mark. I'm trying to remember in the class what I did, but we're just going to clip this all the way down. You're going to have a little bit of excess hanging over the edge. That's okay. I know, I'm like, read it slowly. <laughs> Curious what weight thread you're using. So this is Saya Swag, and I wanna say that her weight thread, is it 60 or 70? So I feel like her thread is a, is a slight bit, it might be 70, I think it's 70, cause I do like the Wizardry 80. Um, I feel like my seal right likes that best, um, to be very honest. Um, but I do like size, and I feel like once I figure out where it needs to be tension-wise with size, it does just fine. But it's getting, it's getting it to be happy tension-wise. It does like a thicker thread. Um, so, so, yeah. So now that I have this clipped... We are going to get our three eighths of an inch seam allowance here, our guide, and We're gonna just stitch this, back stitching at the beginning and the end, making sure everything is lined up nicely for the three eighths of an inch. So we're going, we're just going for it right along that zipper. And I think, yeah. Probably, maybe should have had I can I can do it. 
Three eighths of an inch is a lot along a zipper. But I'm just sewing it as close as I can to that zipper area. Because I have my narrow foot on, I don't have my zipper foot on, and I'm, I'm not changing a foot. I'm not here for that. Oh, my tension looks good. Like I said, it's really just fine in the sweet spot with your stitch length and with the, with the thread tension. Yes, I know nothing. I know nothing about Jukies, you guys. Um, if you don't know my whole story about getting involved in all this, I can share that with you a little bit. So, um, I guess it's last, last July. So my husband and I, we have um, two glamping tents here on our farm that we rent out. Big canvas glamping tents. Um, we've done it since 2018. 2020, we added our second one, um, and being in Pennsylvania, we don't have them up all year long. Um, our season is from April until the beginning of November, because they do have wood-burning stoves in them, um, but the winter time, it's just too much on the tents, um, and also would be too much for us to be, like, clearing the roads that go back to them and all of that. Uh, so we don't, we don't have campers that stay with us in the winter time. So last year, one of our tents had really gotten to the point where we've maintained it and like took good care of it, but it just, it needed repair. The roof really needed repair and we had an extra tent as well. So my husband was like, I looked at the fabricators for a while, I had considered them specifically for that purpose to repair our tents um but i've been sewing since our, our kids are little and so be some excess now transfer your center marks to the other side of your zipper tape okay so i have my one center mark but i also want to i'm gonna make uh, another mark like where my center mark is here I'm gonna on my sides I want to make sure that my, I make a mark on the other side of the zipper because here's the scary part we're gonna pull this zipper we're gonna pull the zipper apart oh did I not clip the centers on this piece crapiola oh well we're gonna fudge Let's pray. Make sure you have all your centers clipped, you guys. Okay. And so, um, Sailrite had one of their sales uh, for free shipping. And my husband was like, let's do it. We're going to fix these tents this summer. So that is why we bought it. And I had never sewn on an industrial machine. I had sewn on a 1970s Singer. And um, all right, now I'm going to read. Transfer your marks on the other side of your zipper tape. Make sure you do the ones from the side. Body two, do not skip this step as it is very important to get a good zipper alignment to your front piece. Once marked, go ahead and detach the other side of the zipper and set it aside for now. <laughs> this is the part. Oh, let's pray. <laughs> we made our marks. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. All right. 
Now we're gonna flip this and we're gonna top stitch it. Um, so, anyways, we bought it um, and to play around with it at first, I like started looking up videos of like what other people do with an industrial machine. Cause I really, I had mostly sewn like aprons and pillows and home decor and like things like that, that I really didn't need an industrial machine for. Well, that opened up a whole, a whole other world for me. As you guys know, I made it longer crossing my fingers. As long as you have those marks, those markings made, we're, you're going to be fine. All right. So we're going to top stitch this. And so we do have a video actually of us repairing the roof of one of the tents, uh, me and my husband together. It was a feat out in our front yard. We had my machine moved over in our bedroom <laughs> because the length of it, like I needed way more space to be able to do it. Um, yeah. But that's how I stumbled upon Lynn's Handmade um, and Lindsay's videos. And um, there were a couple other, I think there was only one other woman at the time doing, who had a fabricator who did bags. Um, I don't know. I don't think there was any anyone else that was doing like what our community sews that had a sale right at that point, had a fabricator at that point. Um, mostly all things for like boating and stuff like that, like more DIY type of stuff that they, they kind of focus on more of that anyways. Um, but pretty much finding Lynn's first and then Jess from Oka Roots. Um, and then I did a video for my fiber dyeing for my Indigo Shambori and that led me down the road of So Magical. Um, and then after teaching at So Magical once, I realized like a lot of people enjoyed the class and will take the class. But if you're in bag making, it's a lot of money. You know, it's a lot of money to go from like to add a whole other craft to the craft you're already spending a lot of money on, if that makes sense. Because fiber dyeing is a lot of money. Like there's a lot of, you know, all the different colors. It's a big investment um, to get into. And so after my class, um, at the So Magical Texas, um, I had leftover fabric and I thought, you know what, I'm just going to dye this and people want it. Great. If not, I'll use it. And it sold out in a matter of minutes, like in a half an hour. And then that is when my husband was like, honey, you know, you love, I love doing the fiber arts. Like I like sewing, but you know, sewing for me is more like, this is my creative area, right? I am near Hershey. Um, we're north of Hershey. And so this is kind of my creative time, um, where not that my fiber dyeing isn't, but it's a, it's work that I enjoy and I do love teaching it, but I realized, you know, I still am going to teach the, the classes, like the indigo classes and natural fiber dyeing, because there'll be some people who want to do it. Um, but I realized, like, it's nice to be able to have that hand-dyed fabric. I focus a lot on the eco-friendly piece of it for people, and because that's my background in ethical fashion. Um, and I just realized I really love doing it as my job. So I appreciate that people like my fabric. All right, so we top stitch this. This piece is all ready now. It's looking really cool. She's gonna love this. Um, so we're gonna set this aside for a minute. How are we doing? I am near, so um, again, yes, I'm near Hershey, north of Hershey. Um, we're up closer, if you're familiar with Yingling Lager, Yingling Beer. Um, Pottsville is not far from me at all. Um, so, all right, let's see here. We need our mesh pieces and our lining 
for our mesh, mesh pieces and our little elastic for our mesh because I think we're gonna we're doing the we're gonna assemble the back panel now. Okay, so just the the back mesh we need, and this is this is interesting. <laughs> All right, so find your mesh pocket. We're gonna fold the elastic over. And clip that in place and it's just important that I guess you decide what side you want to use and I think there's enough that yeah you have more than enough to have like an overhang here did sissy let you out huh and I'm gonna make sure that I'm going the right direction. I wanna find my back and make sure that the mesh is the right direction, yeah. Okay. And then we're just gonna fold that over and clip it in place. What's up, buddy? I know she's here, I saw her. Okay, so we have that clipped in place and now we're gonna do an eighth of an inch top stitch along the bottom of that and you just wanna make sure that you're not stretching this while you're doing it. And I back stitch at the beginning of the end here just because hopefully it keeps it a little secure. that. Now we're going to get our back piece and we're going to clip our, we're going to find our centers on that also. Make sure you find all your centers. What? I don't have anything, bud. And you had plenty of bonies today. Sometimes when I sew late, you guys, and I've been trying to do these sew-alongs a little later so more people can jo join in, because I know on the East Coast, sometimes it's really difficult, like if I do a sew-along, like at three o'clock, um, this, our time, it's like, it's still in the middle of a work day for people. So this way at six, it's like maybe towards the end of a work day or if someone was home for half a day on the West Coast, but he does not like when I sew um, in the evening, he's like, we're done. Ooh. Yeah, here, he's gonna cry. Go down the sissy. It's okay. What? You're okay. I'm gonna use some of my bigger clips to just kind of hold this in place. I got these, these bigger clips are great for projects like this where you have to kind of get in there and hold it. Um, I get them off of Amazon. Now we're just gonna stay stitch this in place. Eighth of an inch. And then once we're done, we can trim that excess off. What buddy, come on now. I love you too. Oh. I know 
she's home. Go down and see her. You go see her. I'm going to see her in a little bit. It's okay. <laughs> I am going to see her in a little bit. It's okay. Now we're going to clip off that extra. Hey, Dennis. Can you take Paulo out? I think he might have to go to the bathroom. All right. We'll call him down to you. He's up here crying. Yeah, he wants to play with somebody or something. Go ahead. Go down the sissy. He, I think he keeps wanting to tell me, like, she's home. Why are you still up here? <laughs> All right, so now we have this part done. We're going to set this aside, and now we're going to work on the back part, the trolley part. All right, so we need the 12 by 10 all right so here's the trolley part we need our one zipper that we prepped which is the Which one? The nine inch one. Okay. So this one. And the lining piece. Okay. You know what? I cut this extra for a lining. I think I'm going to use the lining that they gave me because it's thinner and it won't be such a, it won't be as bulky as the canvas will be. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is clip our centers, you guys. First thing we're gonna do is clip our centers. Okay, if I need to catch up, but no zipper, should I do that now? I would definitely, I would definitely catch up, hon. Well, I'll, I'll take this easy here. All right, we're gonna, I think this is a good moment where, where maybe we can chat. What do you think? I'm gonna clip my centers on this, but then I'll take a moment to chat. So Kristen, since I appreciate you so much that you're here with me, seriously, those of you who are here live and spending this time with me, I really want you to know how much I value that. Like. I am not um, production quality like some people. <laughs> Try not to be down on myself about, about my videos. I'm just going slow. <laughs> um, yeah, so we'll talk a little bit about some things coming up. So if you are here live, we're just going to take a moment. We're at the trolley sleeve area. So this way, if you need to catch up, um, if you're on another step, like we'll just stick with the trolley sleeve area for a couple seconds. Okay. Um, until, until some people are a little bit further ahead. Um, <clears throat> so some things that are coming up that are quite exciting that are happening here. So if you have been following over my, my Facebook group, which is, um, Thunderbird Handcrafted with Genevieve. So please follow um, over in the free Facebook group. That's where we have a lot more community, I would say. Um, last week we had, it was a quite an adventure with Facebook. Um, but uh, 
we had a good time figuring out how I got blocked or something. It was very weird. Um, but that's really our community. Like that's really where we share things. I do some fun giveaways over there. Um, I do share in advance all of, um, like, um, the events, like the things that I'm doing over here on YouTube. Um, but I also share a lot about like things that are happening here within the shop and so forth. Um, and we had a print pre-order, um, over Thanksgiving. Was it over Thanksgiving or right before Thanksgiving? Apollo, what are you doing? Are you playing with her? <laughs> it's so funny. He's like sitting at the top of the steps. Um, and so, uh, amazingly, the print pre-order will be here this week. Now, I don't know if I'm going to get into cutting it this week because my kid just came home and we're probably going to start decorating for Christmas. Um, but usually a turnover time for print for pre-orders for prints um is not that fast and my my printer really came through and i can't wait to go pick everything up on thursday morning and like actually see it um but uh i probably won't cut into it until you bought the northern Light. i'm very excited to see how the Northern Lights, the embroidery one or the the one that more is more watercolory. I'm excited about both, um, quite honestly. Um, and so that'll be happening. I'll be getting all of that. So hopefully, you know, once we get everything decorated, everything and next week we can start cutting. My husband got my cutting table all set up and ready to go. Um, so hopefully we'll get all of your pre-orders um, for your prints out before Christmas. Like that's so exciting. Um, so that's happening. And then um, I'm also working on a subscription box. So if you didn't know, I do blend my own teeth. Um, you ordered both. <laughs> um, I blend my own tea. And so I'm working on a subscription box for the new year, a budget friendly one, because having my um, dynamic fabric kits that have the two half yards of fabric and other little goodies in them, I really wanted, um, I really wanted something that, because uh, that, that kit is a little bit more pricier every month, and I, I can't make that a subscription because I just don't, I mean, being optimistic, I, I don't know if I could meet the demand of a hand-dyed fabric subscription, and I didn't want a subscription that costs a lot, and those things fluctuate in pricing. Um, the dynamic fabric kits, depending on the um, type of fabric that I put in there. But I could do a um, smaller subscription um, that is, you know, budget friendly. So you'll get two prints on fabrics that I either dye or that will be print fabrics. Um, you'll get a sampling of my tea. And then there'll be other little self-care things or sewing self-care things, like things that take care of your sewing room or to um, support, take care of your sewing machines or the tools in your sewing room. So um, if you know, you've been following me for a while, you know, one of my big things is like taking care of ourselves. Like part of the reason we sew is because it is therapy, right? Um, and so, you know, taking that little time every month. So I'm excited about the Stitch and uh, Sip subscription, um, but I'm trying, I'm finalizing all of that right now. All right. So how is that for a little bit of an intermission, Kristen? You feel like you're at a better place? I see you're going on the Socation in Alaska. Oh, that's a dream. Um, I'm, I, so once I have, both my kids are in college. My son um, will start college next fall. Then I foresee being able to go on more of these adventures with you all. But right now my time, my time is, is, uh, thin um because i've been busy taking care of adult kiddos getting to where they need to go right okay so we're gonna go back to our trolley sleeve with the pocket all right so we're gonna go back down here how are we in seeing things we're good nope just keep going chris is like just i'll get there <laughs> um so what we're going to do first is we are going to, I'm going to just mark my center on this just so I have the center and don't look at my tension on the bottom of these because it's horrible because those are the first things we did. So, 
but guess where I am? <laughs> All right. And so I'm going to lay that. Let me see. Place the trolley sleeve pocket tab zipper on top of your main fabric piece right sides together. Okay. And then we're going to lay our fabric lining, our little pocket piece. And I'm, I'm going to clip my centers on this too, just because clipping your centers always helps people. Okay. So now we're going to sandwich this on top of that. Like so. I'm going to clip it across here. And we're going to clip that excess off then. But... These number three zippers are always, they don't want to stay where you put them. Okay, and now line everything emo evenly. Sew across the top using a quarter of an inch seam allowance, but if you're using a number five zipper, do the three eighth inch. You want to make sure you're catching all three layers, so. We're gonna actually there's the quarter inch mark. We're just gonna back stitch at the beginning and the end. clip this whole part off here because I don't need it. Again, I don't think I did those tabs right. <laughs> I'm sure if the Salty Sews girls see this, they'll be like, what did she do? All right, so now we're going to, now what? Now flip the main panel to the front and the lining piece to the back to, to see your zipper. Okay, so we're gonna just lay it like, like we would think it would go, like your lining piece. We're gonna finger press that in the back and we're gonna finger press this front piece and we're gonna top stitch. Top stitch the top here with an eighth of an inch seam allowance So we have our top stitch done now. Now, lay flat. If okay. Now, 
lay the trolley sleeve down facing up. Take the bottom edge of the main fabric and fold it up. Yep, finding our center there. I'm just gonna clip it there for now. All right, and then you're gonna flip it over and you're gonna take your lining and you're gonna flip it this way. And this is where in the class they said, like if you wanted to make it slightly short, like make your lining piece slightly um, smaller because the pocket is gonna be there you can do that. So I'm going to I'm going to do that cuz that way it's not like super bulky. So you're basically cutting like a half an inch to an inch off the lining piece, not the not your main your exterior piece. And then I'm just gonna clip those tabs to be flush. All right, and now we're going, so using, okay, so again, if you're using the pre-made zippers, that is a three inch zipper. It's a quarter inch seam allowance. If you're using a, a five number five zipper tape, it's a three eighth inch. This is where you may need to like open that zipper a little bit when you get down to the other side. Just so that. You know, because it gets like a bubble there, you know, because the zippers, the zipper pulls in the way. do is you're gonna turn it this way so then your pocket your pocket is there like so and you kind of get to decide how big of a lip you want and that's kind of based off of where does your pocket end so you just want to make sure when we sew this you don't catch your pocket so now I'm gonna top stitch along my zipper you want to try to make sure that it's because the zipper is kind of tricky there. It's folding in the direction of the zipper. Do you get what I'm saying? That seam underneath to make sure that it's going in the right direction. And now I'm going to do a top stitch along my zipper and then I'm going to do another top stitch across the top. Eighth of an inch. My zipper is a little wonky, but that's okay. It's 
still going to serve its purpose. I'm just going to go up this direction and then sew down this direction. trucking away here we're figuring it out <laughs> all right so there's your little pocket for in the back right now we're gonna take this and yes so they also have and this is where you don't want to sew your pocket you want to kind of push it out of the way they also um, have that this down here is top stitched along the bottom. So I'm gonna do that as well. Just make sure you're not sewing the pocket. That's why you wanna cut off that about an inch. Once you have that top stitch, you can take it and maneuver, maneuver it to lay nicer. Okay. All right, so there's the trolley part. Now I need to find, where did I put my mesh? piece here and now I need to see how far up find your back piece align the top of the trolley sleeve just about a quarter inch from the top of the mesh pocket so we just kind of want to look where is a quarter inch from where the top of our mesh pocket ends is what I'm gathering. Or from the very top of the mesh pocket. I think it might be the very top of the mesh pocket. So almost like, almost where your stitch line is is actually where we wanna position that so that your top stitch, you can't see it once the trolley um, piece is there. You're gonna wanna find our center So just kind of make a crease. Now I'm just going to find my center here. Okay. So we're just going to lay that there. And then what you're going to do is now you're gonna clip this in place on the sides. It's coming together, you guys. Promise me if you're working on this, you're going to finish it and share a picture with me and share a picture with the girls at Salty Sews. Because, again, this isn't, I think, you know, being intimidated by this pattern is, is totally fine because it is, it definitely has its steps. But then finishing it, finishing it means something, guys. So I'm just going to stay stitch this down with an eighth of an inch allowance. Mm -hmm. 
big scissors instead of my snips all right there's there's our back little pocket all right now now we're moving on to the front so we're gonna set this aside again yes I know you guys on the west coast three hours behind yeah so the this mesh the one mesh piece goes on the outside and this is the pocket in the back, but there's another mesh piece that we didn't get to yet, you guys. So we're gonna get to that soon. All right, so now we're going to get our front. Oh no, no we're not. We need to keep our back. We need to keep our back and we need to, we're gonna put our back on here, which this is, this is a bit of the technical piece as well. So we're going to have it facing, have it, the zipper part facing us, okay? And then we're going to line up and pin or clip, yep. Yep. All right. So we're gonna, facing, we're gonna find our center here. Ugh, these darn stink bugs, they show up everywhere. They show up here when it gets, goes from being cold to warmer, right? We had a few days like that recently. All right, so now I'm gonna find my center here. Now Apollo's playing with it. Here's where, when you're doing this, we wanna just watch where, where the seam is here because we're gonna pivot and you'll see we're gonna make a little snip to make those corners squared. So, we're gonna do a three eighth of an inch seam allowance. So I'm gonna use my magnet my seam guide okay and you i'll show you i'll try to I'll try to get in here so you can really see when i when i stop so sorry zipper question on that piece right um zipper on your main big piece or on your back piece because your main big piece you're lining you might make sure you get all your centers make sure you mark your center on and line it up on the exterior okay make sure you mark your centers on your sides then on your zipper before you pull the other part of the zipper off if you're talking about the exterior front zipper if you're talking about this, the slip pocket piece, yes, the trolley on that piece, left to right. Yes, yes, left to right. Yes, you're correct. 
just like we would anything else. All right, so we're gonna do three eighths of an inch. And when we get to our little corners, we're actually going to try to make sure that our, our needle, it comes down right where our seam like starts and stops, okay? And we're gonna leave our, our needle down. We're gonna clip and pivot and I'll, I'll show you when we get there. Oh, don't, don't give me a, don't get hooked up on me here. Sometimes that little of my thread means my thread is gonna get caught in my rotary hook. Well, it did something, but I might need to go back over that in the, at the bottom there, but it didn't get, it didn't stop. Okay, so now I'm gonna kind of hold right where I think I'm gonna, I might use my stiletto here, just to hold this in place where I need it to be. Okay, so I'm gonna keep my needle down. Then I'm going to pivot it. Let me see if when I pivot it, it does what I want without clipping it. Mm, it does, it does. So do you see how like this is like triangleized? That means it's gonna do what I want it to do. So as long as you have that, but I have my needle down right after that seam. And now I'm just gonna stitch across. And when I get here, I wanna stop again. I'm gonna use my stiletto just to kind of know where that place is. Okay, now I'm gonna turn and I'm gonna push this to the side now. Now this part is more triangleized. And that's boxing that corner there. Okay. Now I'm going to go here and I'm going to re-stitch this that starter seam there because it it wasn't quite right so I don't want it to pull This will be important. Doo -doo -doo. Once it is all stitched, make sure the bottom lines up nicely. It does. This will be important when it comes to finishing the zipper. This is where you can take a quick break if you haven't and stretch a little. <laughs> but you guys can see, I'll kind of turn these corners a little bit so you can kind of see how it's now boxed there. So, turned out really both of them turned out really nice so you just kind of want to like that's where the stiletto is really nice because you can just hold where you know that that seam is so that then you can turn it 
All right, so I'm gonna keep it inside out though and set it aside. Now I'm gonna get my front and this is where we're gonna clip our centers. And then after we clip our centers, we're gonna put our bag tag on. So we don't forget that. And I have the cutest bag tag from Jade over at the Heartwood and Hide that I think is gonna go really well with this. So centers at the top and bottom and then your centers on the sides as well. Don't forget the ones on the side. Okay, now where's my bag tag? I got these, um, these were one of their Fresh Tag Fridays. It's stitched by Light of Night. I thought that it was really cute and it went really well with the colors. So I'm trying to decide here. Do I wanna just put it, hmm. Maybe I'll move it up underneath the moth and not have it way down here. What do you think? I think I need at least, how much do you need at the bottom? I would say you're gonna need at least an inch and a half. Let me see what my original one is. Oh, it's, yeah, it's probably almost, almost two inches up actually from the bottom. So what's two inches? Yeah, I guess that works. That'll still look nice. It's just covering up that little point there. Okay. Let me mark that two inches. And you could decide to put your bag tag someplace else, like maybe even on that trolley, um, on the trolley sleeve. But I don't know. I like it being on the front. All right. We're gonna, I usually start my tags in the center. Jade and I are working on some really cool tags, y'all, for the new year. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited. So many fun things. Yeah, we're working on um, some tags for like an exclusive release that I'm gonna be doing in February. And then we're working on some original tags um, for the shop with some fun art. They're gonna be cool. It's so fun to have such artistic and professional friends, I must say. Like, these business people are top notch. All right. Oh, that looks so good. I'm so glad. So, I had to vote which thread to use, and it was 
To be very honest, it was basically like 50-50 people wanted the peacock, 50-50 people wanted the wheat. But I, I'm going to be really honest, y'all. The wheat, I'm actually really happy because it's such a good contrast from the rest. I feel like the peacock wouldn't have like popped like the wheat is. All right, what do you guys think? That turned out very cool. Very cool, and I it's probably crooked, but my daughter doesn't care. <laughs> All right, so here then we're going to take our zipper. All right, and we're gonna clip our, put our zipper where our marks are. So we have our center mark up here. We're gonna clip those in place. And we're gonna do the same thing here with that like boxing the corner when we get to those parts, okay? And then we're gonna put our center mark for our zipper. This is where your stiletto will really be very helpful around these turns. It's where you don't want to necessarily pull anything or make anything weird. Because that definitely matters. So just keep it wherever it lands. As long as those marks, those center marks we made are lining up, that's that's what matters here. Now it says again to do a three eighths of an inch seam allowance here on your zipper. Um, I feel like that made my zipper pretty snug. So again, I have a narrow foot on, I don't have a zipper foot on. So I'm just gonna stick with my quarter inch seam allowance and see how that pans out for me. Use your stiletto if you need to. And the closer you get to those corners, the more you're gonna have to hold it down. You could use hemostats too if you wanted. But you really, you really want to try to make sure you're not super pulling anything out of, out of place. And just take your time here, okay?
This is the part where you stick your tongue out and <laughs> hold on to every breath. is that those marks are meeting your center marks. So you have a trolley. I, I have a cart for my Bernina too. It's nice. Okay. All right. So we have that part done. Now make sure your center marks line up. We're going to grab our zipper pulls and give this a test. And then we're going to work on the lining of this. So we gotta pick it around the top there. Oh, it looks, it's looking pretty decent, you guys. There's two. It's looking, we're so far so good. Hey y'all. All right, so now you take it back apart, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Test out, attaching your zippers, ensure everything fits and zips up nicely. All right, we're gonna set both of these pieces aside. We're gonna assemble the lining. We're gonna set our pulls aside so we don't lose them. Okay. Now, we're gonna get our other mesh piece here. All right, so in the pattern, it does tell you how to cut this. I'm not going to divulge that because again, please buy their pattern. Um, but you're going to measure a certain amount down, measure a certain amount down, and then you're going to cut it on a diagonal there. Okay. And then we're going to use these pieces. We're going to make a little frame on the mesh. So that's the next step. So I'm just going to clip these along here. I just used a chalk um, pencil to mark where I needed to cut because it's hard to see on the mesh because you can't really make a, a real mark, you know? So I just used a chalk pencil and that, see, that worked. All right, and then we're gonna do Oh, 
now they have you make a binding. All right, so we're just gonna fold it like a hot dog like we did our first. And we're gonna fold it again. And we're gonna fold it again. Like so. And then we're gonna sandwich it. Now we're just gonna do an eighth of an inch seam allowance along the bottom there. Yes, those are binding pieces, correct? Yes, not the zipper yet. These are just binding pieces. again make our binding piece there are still four of the uh, December dynamic fabric kits if you're looking to get this dyed fabric that I'm using that it's a really beautiful like purples and blues um, you also get um, it's called alpha and then in the other the other fabric is called sweet nothings and that's pinks um, so there are still four of those left. We are doing a big um, pink Christmas, not because I know my Katie told me today that there is this like big thing with small shops doing like a pink Christmas sale or something like that. Or I don't know. I've never heard of it, but she's like, are you doing that because of this? And I was like, I know. I just, I'm not a huge pink person, but I do think that pink um, Christmas decorations are just so pretty. So I decided um, since Friday is my last day that I'm saying um, if you order something, I'll get it to you by Christmas. Um, I'm doing a big sale starting on Thursday. I don't put my um, fabric on sale. I just, I can't. I'm already, I feel like what I'm charging is definitely fair for it being all hand, hand dyed. Um, but I'll, a lot of my handmade stuff will be on sale. There will be some of the, um, dyed accessories. All of those will be on sale. Um, my, uh, D stash area. So all my stuff from my creativity corner that I'm D stashing, they'll be on sale. Oh, did I do that? Oh no, I didn't I have it the wrong direction. All right, so there's those pieces. Now we're just going, we're gonna use, um, I'm gonna clip this down. We're gonna use our, other zipper tape we prepped. This is the smaller one. And we're gonna put double-sided tape. Along there. gonna do the one one piece first and we're gonna line that up like so and we're just gonna top stitch that everybody following everybody's good or we've just decided we're gonna go at our we're all gonna go at our own pace <laughs> all right okay 
Okay. And we're gonna take this side of the double-sided tape off and we're going to make sure that everything is lining up where it needs to line up. Hi, bud. Are they not paying attention to you? off this excess on the sides oh my goodness all right so there's the start of that but this has a lining now what okay I'm just reading. Okay. This is my lining piece. Hi, Rinda. Thanks for jumping in to say hi. I appreciate you watching the replay. Oh, can't stay awake. Yeah, it's 8.30. Man, yeah, we have a little ways to go yet, but not too, not too much longer. Um, and so this is definitely going to your, um, this piece is going, your mesh piece is definitely going to be bigger than the lining. Okay, so just keep that in mind. All right, but we want to line it up as best we can. That's where... That's really where our, um, like you can actually decide if you want to make it flush up at the top. That's probably the easiest thing. And then just kind of line it up straight this way. So I'm going to clip the top first. Go down to Sissy and Brav, Butter. Go down. Go ahead. Go see them. It's okay. And then once I have that, I'm going to take my longer clips and just kind of hold this in place and i'm gonna start up top here going down doing the quarter inch um just stay stitching it hey guys call paulo he's crying here go down the sissy all right, so we're just gonna do an eighth of an inch.
So we have that stitched on. I'm gonna clip off the excess here. So there's that. So now we have to make the decision. Um, okay. So we have to make the decision that, okay, so when this when this folds down, so right, you're gonna unzipper it and it's gonna fold down this way. You wanna now, your zipper, you don't want it to be like this, right? You want it to be like this, okay? So you gotta remember that what you think is the top here is actually the bottom, all right? So I do believe we're gonna sandwich these together if I remember correctly. Okay, it's time to bring the interior piece you made to exterior piece. Lay both pieces right sides together. A zipper should be sandwiched in the middle. Align the top sides together. And your bottom is not going, you're not gonna stitch this bottom together, okay? So we just, I'm gonna just put one clip down there just to kind of keep it in place. But I'm going to line this up so I can see where my zipper is. Keep my zipper out of the way. All right, now I do keep my stiletto close because I definitely don't want to catch that zipper, but I'm gonna sew it from this side so I can see where my seam is for my zipper and hopefully go right along there so we can't see that. I'm just gonna use my stiletto to hold things in place.
just want to kind of push that zipper if you have to. This is the trickiest part, and this is where when we piece it together, again, my first one kind of similar. I needed, I didn't have a whole lot of space. And it, it should be snug though, as well. Like it shouldn't. here. Push it in there. Out of the way. Oh! Bob and Chicken at one. You guys. Right as I was getting around that turn too. That's never fun. That's alright. I made another bobbin so we don't have to take that break. There's one thing that drives me nuts is when I can see the zipper where I, you know, where I should have only done an eighth of an inch seam allowance when I put the zipper on. One thing that when doing the zipper with my domestic, because I'm not as, um, it's so nice with an industrial that you can slow down your stitching, you know? Okay. So now, We're going to turn this, and I think I'm going to clip, like, these corners. I'm just going to, I'm going to not clip my, you don't want to clip your zipper, but I wanted to turn that just a little bit. Yeah. All right, let's, let's turn this right side out. Yeah, I know, Caitlin. He's down. He's down now with the kids. Oh no, he passed out here at the top of the steps. He he stays with me. He doesn't, you know. He he's my bud. All right, now the salty souls girls say to iron this, but we did not iron it in the class. And but it probably it probably would be smart to iron this because 
I don't have any of that set up right now. So I'm just going to like really pull it in the hopes that I can get it to lay pretty flush. It looks great though. And then we're going to top stitch this. But it looks so good. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to again clip this down here, just kind of hold it in place and just pull on my zipper all the way around. Just kind of to get that as flat as possible before we top stitch. Oh, it looks so good. Okay. We're going to top stitch this with an eight of eighth of an inch. And you just want to try to pull on your, you might want to move that zipper pull underneath into the center just so you don't catch it by accident. Caitlin, I didn't know you were here. Thanks for tuning in. If you guys don't follow my girl, Caitlin, um, she does lives over on her Instagram. Caitlin, if you're still here, put your Instagram account in the, in there. I'm going to use my stiletto to go around the top here. So glad that I chose this wheat colored thread. Of course, bestie Caitlin and my she Caitlin's one of my strikers. She does awesome work. And um, thank God for Caitlin the other week when I was locked out of my Facebook account really help me out. I have such good people helping me. I'm super thankful. All right, guys, it's coming together. The one thing about this pattern is when you think you're getting close to done, you're actually not. <laughs> um, that is the one thing about this pattern is like you think like now, like, oh gosh, I'm getting close, right? Yeah, sort of. <laughs> oh, that looks so cool. I'm glad I chose to do some of the dyed fabric on it. All right, but this is a happy dance part. All right, now we're gonna test this again. <laughs> because just every step of the way you want to make sure that it's working so now that we have this on that's all good now we want to just make sure that it works and I'm off a little bit there so good look how great that looks you guys here I'll come up come away from it look how good it looks oh she's gonna love this she's gonna love it all right so now I'm gonna say stitch across the bottom ends of your zipper tape so both to secure your zipper pulls all right so now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go straight across here 
just do a little back and forth. She's gonna, she's gonna freak. So she just took a class. Um, she took a, a am I saying an entomology class? Study like a bug class at college. So she's gonna, and she had to make like a bug collection or anything. So she's really gonna like this. All right. Now what? Now I think we're doing the base. Oh no, we're making our strap. So let's make our strap quick. What do we got here? We have, we don't need those yet. We just need these and we need our strap. And I think I'm gonna rivet the, this, you guys, just because I, I don't like stitching it. But mm, maybe I will stitch it. So we need, I can't make up my mind. Cause the, the wheat thread on this black is gonna look pretty dope. So I'm going to burn the edge of my webbing. And find, that's the top. Right? Nope. The distraction. There we go. And how far does it say? I like folding it over. It doesn't say to fold it over, but I like to fold it over, you guys. And now we're just going to top stitch that. Oh, come on. Don't, don't, don't mess up the other side. Don't be a jerk. <laughs> come on. Oh. I'm afraid to look at the other side. Ah, it was a jerk, you guys. What a mess. Look at that. I don't know why I did that. Well, nothing is unfixable, you guys. This is why I like to rivet this stuff. I should have riveted it, but now I put those holes in it, so I have to sew it. Let's try this again. Okay. We're going to take this clip off. So hopefully that keeps it from. Oh, much better. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to 
burn those. All right. Now, you also have a little piece, too. Um, I'm going to get our lobster claws. So, I need to see which way is which. Burn down the edge of this side of the webbing. And now, make sure I'm not twisted here. Fold over. And I'm going to clip it just to start, but I'm going to take it off. That thread, because I think that's what did that the last time. Very nice. Looks very nice. Very nice. All right. There's our strap. So we're just going to set that to the side. And now we're going to get our bottom. Our bottom. Our bottom. Do we have two bottom pieces? What's going on with my internet, you guys? It's I hope it's I hope it lets us finish. It's like it's your bedtime. Go to bed. All right, let's get this bottom on. And there should be two pieces of bottom, but I wonder if I didn't cut two pieces. So hopefully the internet stays. I'm gonna cut this other bottom piece very quick. Okay. All right. And now I want to put this piece on the inside, this piece on the outside. So this piece is the piece that we're going to use as the actual bottom. I'm going to clip my centers. Oh no, it is just one piece, isn't it? I don't need to. I wonder if I should use this interface piece instead because it's sturdier. I think I'm going to. If I would have interfaced my fabric, I would have used that. But since this is the bottom, I'm going to use the piece that came with my kit. I'll use that other one to make another, another one, maybe. Maybe. This is an undertaking, this this pattern. So I kind of see why like people like to take the class, right? To make it. Um, it is an undertaking. It is a more intermediate sew. All right, so now we have gonna put it that direction. And we're going first we're gonna sew these on. So Locate the, well, this is your 12 and a half piece. All right, we're going to mark an inch and a half.
All right, and this part here, you don't have to necessarily. Um, is the thing, does it go down an inch and a half? Ah, uh, fold over. Oh, fold it over an inch and a half. So that's where that piece goes. All right, that makes sense. Maybe I can fold it under. Let me see. It's not telling me to do that, though. All right, we're just going to sew it. close to that D-ring, just like so. There's little rubber bands here at my, I don't know what those were for, or why they're there. <laughs> and they're, they're actually like, they're thicker than the ones I even use for my hair. It's very weird, like I don't even know where they, what they are for. Why are they there? Oh, yeah. Okay. Maybe my husband set them there from something. That could be. And then didn't tell me. Oh, hey, I put those two washer things next to your sewing machine that go to this. have those washers on. Now what we're going to do, it says once you've done that, stitch down each side to secure across the width of the strap, going over your stitch lines that are not close to your D-ring. Okay. Okay. So this is the way it goes on. That's the center. Yep, all right, I'm gonna put double-sided tape. Just because that will help. Just use the big scissors, Sha. I'm just eyeballing this. You could get more precise than me. And then I can kind of see where that one and a half inch line, that's where it's telling us that it wants us to kind of stop. So I'm gonna go in there and we're just gonna create a box.
pull those through. It's coming along. It's coming along. We're so close. I can taste it. Okay, now we're going to turn everything inside out. And we know where our... Um, Kind of like our, our center marks are now. So we want to find those center, mar center, center marks. And clip them in place. I'm sorry, you guys haven't been able to see me sewing. Goodness. I hope you guys could see some of that. I didn't realize that I wasn't... You guys weren't seeing it. All right, now here's where you wanna just make sure that these pieces are not getting in your seam allowance. So you kinda of wanna push them out of the way and then clip. Always better to have more clips than not a lot of times. And this, you also really want to use your stiletto here too, I would say, just to get those, to box the corner the way you want. So I am going to start, I think, in the back here and go around. So I'm just going to start... Right here in the back, we're going to be doing, what is our seam allowance here? Three eighths of an inch. I'm gonna put my little seam guide down. I'm trying to get my thread stuck there. Okay. And now I'm just gonna go around and when I get to these areas, I'm gonna be using my stiletto to pivot I'm gonna try to get my needle to go right down in the seam and then pivot around, okay? right down in the seam. Now I'm going to turn it, leave my needle down, make sure that everything lays flat again. There we go.
now when at the zipper part, I want my needle to kind of go right down in the center of the zipper. And that's a little tricky because I want that to go this way. Pivot that, make that flat, because the zipper's towards the front. Do you see how I'm like right at the edge of that zipper and in the middle of the zipper area? Now I can go straight across the bottom. everything in place. I think I did that right. We'll see. I'm a little worried it's going to be a little wonky. sure everything's lining up okay. All right, let's see. Let's see what we have here. Let's hope, let's pray. be a little wonky is that front maybe that front zipper area but let's see let's see how we did here I don't know I don't know that front zipper area I'm a little a little nervous about well maybe we did all right The bottom, bottom's looking pretty, looks pretty good. There I have a little, there I have a little pucker. Little pucker pleat. Oh, wow. All right, let's put our, let's put our little case in there and see. I do think the girls of Salty Says have um, a link on their site for these. And it is going to be a little snug when you first put it on. It's supposed to be that way. This is so cute. She's going to love it. I just need to twist it a little bit here. I need to clip those zipper ends off as well. But... Other than that, it's all right. Let's see how it shuts. Oh, it shuts nice. You guys, 
Let me get the strap. So the strap, look at, look how cute this is. She's gonna think, she's gonna love it. All right, so what you do is you take your strap then, and you're gonna leave it down one hole and clip it to the bottom there. And then leave it through the other side and clip it to the bottom. <laughs> Look how great this turned out. You guys. Oh, she's gonna love it. And then everything opens up real, real nice. And then you have your little area for your scissors or whatever else. Close it up. Yeah, we did good. We did good. Again, confident beginner to intermediate is definitely the everything but the machine tote. But once you accomplish it, it feels so good. So I'm really glad that for those of you who joined me, for those of you who started yours, who are working on yours, push through, push through. It's so worth it in the end. And even if there's little areas of where it's wonky, this is, this is worth it, you know? It definitely some, it, 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 it definitely advances your skill. You guys, one more spin. <laughs> Kristen, what does that mean, one more spin? <laughs> like, another try, give it another try. I, I, again, like I said, my first one, there's so much, especially if you're using, like, a heavy-duty and a uh, domestic machine. Like, there was definitely areas when I was doing this part that just, just being able to control your speed when you're doing this part was definitely, definitely, um, yeah, that was definitely tricky. So trolley wise, it'll fit over your suitcase. So this will fit down over your suitcase. Look, if you have a roller suitcase, um, I guess trolley isn't really the right word, but I have, um, so my Bernina, I'm gonna pull it out here. My Bernita came with this little baby, right? And so it has one of these hang handles like a suitcase does. So here, I'll show you with hers because mine has stuff in it and it's kind of heavy to lift like up over my head. But here, let me grab hers and show you. So it'll fit really on any suitcase handle like this. See? So if it has a suitcase handle like this, it'll, it'll fit over it. Um, I know that like the, um, like the swag wagon things, the swagons, um, some of them have handles like this and some of them don't. Um, so you just gonna, I guess you'd have to play with it to see what it fits. Um, but it's fairly, you know, like, I don't know, let me, let me measure it how far apart because I would still have some room here um we're saying we're talking like seven and a half inches that that handle area could be so you still have some room if you have something that's a little wider than this but it'll fit down over anything so that's the everything but the machine tote y'all i hope i hope you enjoy it <laughs> i'll check later yeah check later when you're done when you're done making your tote it has been fun you guys it has been fun again i am doing um a big sale on thursday on my website so you definitely if you're not um subscribed to my newsletter um, if you go into my free Facebook group, I do have a link um, pinned to the top of the page. It's called Color Theory for Crafters. And really, that's kind of my background. So I worked in ethical fashion for 
eight years, nine years, uh, and just being a part of, um, you know, developing fashion lines and things like that, using color theory to um, decide what goes well together and so forth. So if you sign up for my newsletter, you do get a download that is just a beginner's color theory um, kind of worksheet type of thing, um, printout. Uh, and then you're on my email list to get alerts for anything that's, that's like special that we're doing. So if you are signed up for that, new releases, that sort of thing, you'll get um, access to the coupon code for um, something special on Thursday. And then you'll also um, be the first to know what all this, all the deals are on my website. And, it, and it's everywhere. Um, I'll say I don't do discounts on fabric, but there will be something that benefits those who purchase fabric. Um, and so if you've been kind of eyeing something up or trying to watch your budget during the holiday season, or maybe just want to get some handmade gifts. I have a bunch of bags and hydro pouches and things like that on my website. Um, it's my last, it's the last hurrah, especially to ship it for a holiday because I would be shipping it out Friday. Uh, and then, um, but the big day for the sale is Thursday. So check out Thursday. But thanks for joining me. I'm going to go hang out with my kiddo um, that I haven't seen in quite a while. I hope you had a fun time. If you watch this live, thank you for being here. Please post your everything but the machines over on my group as well as over in the Salty Sews group. Let those girls see that you accomplished this. Okay. Uh, and uh, come back again. We're going to do the next sew along is going to be New Year's Day. I know there are other people who do sew alongs. We all are here to support each other. Our, my next sew along is going to be the transponder tote, which I know Kate did. We're going to do the extra large and we're going to be using something extra special from my friend Katie, um, a new release that she's going to have on her site. Uh, and we're going to be making myself a bag for the Oka Roots cruise. Can you change that time to 1030? <laughs> you know what, Kristen? I think you deserve you deserve that concession. I think, I think maybe I can change that because you've been here this entire time with me. Um, so yeah, we'll change the time. Uh, and then that way we can get together on New Year's Day and we'll just kind of have a relaxing, fun sewing day together then too. But until then, see you over on the Facebook group. I'm usually over on Instagram every day. Uh, and, um, Thanks so much for all your support. I just, I can't tell you how thankful I am this year for all of you. Uh, and uh, have a great holiday. Have a great holiday season. Enjoy your family and your friends. Uh, and see you soon. Have a great night.